Again, it's a significant point that Donington made there. The first two days of this test match, very little sunlight. We've only had 89 overs of play, so not a lot of wearing on that surface, so it's still very good for batting. That should keep the confidence with Zimbabwe as well, because they will have the opportunity to bat at some point in time today. Tornfield umpires, of course, will rifle from Australia. Jeff Crew also supporting that on field effort. So Richard Garava will take the first ball from the 14th. I suppose, as well, as they're talking about the wear and tear on the pitch, you'd think you're in a different city. All of a sudden, there's a little bit of cloud splattering at the back there. You can see behind the buildings. But for the last two days, we've had absolutely no sun. So there's been no opportunity for the wicket cracks to open or to actually wear it. We've had a lot of time of covers on the pitch. And it's almost not far off for brand new wicket here. Here goes Garaba. Just a reminder that the new ball was taken in the 84th over. That's a second new ball. So this ball being used less than 10 overs old. Get a look at the surface and as mentioned, few cracks. Still a very, very good surface for batting. Haven't seen a lot of turn on offer for the spinners. Mavuta and Masakatsa. They were good in terms of their lengths, but not a lot of turn and spin. One thing that we did note yesterday when both players were getting to their hundreds, maybe the wicket not coming on as much. That's probably the most notable sort of characteristic of this wicket. We've been talking about day three, this wicket's going to turn. And maybe in normal conditions, if we had the sunshine like this, day three it would have. It's not going to do that in this test match. But one notable fact is the lack of pace on it. Oftentimes teams batting, especially on a surface that is a little bit slow, especially given the fact that there have been two days of rain and very truncated play, teams tend to use a heavy roller as against a light roller, just to compact the surface a little bit more so that the pace increases. I understand that the light roller was used before the start of today's play. You're also talking about little areas of things that maybe Craig Irvin and the Zimbabwe side could have done a little bit better. I suppose one thing we haven't discussed much about is the short ball play. And maybe the idea that Zimbabwe don't have the pace to do that, maybe West Indies could consider that. But you would know as an opening batsman. When someone's banging it into the deck, and it's coming sort of past your shoulders and through your throat, the inability to get out the way because of the slowness of the pitch is going to make it difficult. And the time as well. Sometimes because of that slowness, the ball just delays in front of you, which prompts you as a batter to go after it. So it can create a bit of indecision for you as a batter. And it's an effective delivery on a surface like this. We haven't seen a lot of bounces from the Zimbabwean fast bowlers. Well, Chandapal played it really well. And some of them took the hand off the bat because of maybe the ball not coming on. But the probably most obvious chance in the whole innings was the short one to Chamberpole that went past the wicketkeeper. So it's gonna be interesting whether or not that ploy is used more. I think West Indies will use it a bit more. First runs of the day. Off the legs, two straight from the grabber. 
will be just the two for uh, Chandapal. So he's off and running for the day. It's 90 bold, 223 without loss. Oh, a bit of swing. And uh, Ricochet will get them at least one. Brad Evans got a really good arm. And I think if any team looked at that, where, where it's going to start being... A, so Zimbabwe's not going to bowl West Indies up. Let's put it that way. So I think that Zimbabwe worrying about not having wickets, as we stand right now on day three, not a huge issue. What is the issue is how long West Indies are going to bat. Maybe how long we can keep them in the field, because they might need to set the pace. Challenging for these two out in the middle to score at a relatively quick pace. Of course, the first two days of this test match was quite pleasing for the West Indians. If you ask me, ideally, I would have loved to see a 330 for five, maybe. And I say that in a perfect world. Of course, I look at the conditions, I look at the opposition bowlers, and I think. The West Indians, although they are 224 without loss, might have appreciated a position of maybe 330 for five, getting them closer to a target where they can declare and impose themselves in this test match. But surely, projecting the day's play, the West Indians should be looking to bat at most 40 overs. Get to 350, close to 400. And have that declaration. And I see that taken into consideration that the weather forecast for the 50 suggests rain. So we might have a truncated fifth day. So you've got to play with the end in mind. I suppose as well as how confident West Indies are in bowling Zimbabwe out twice. We don't have a crystal ball on how Zimbabwe will bat on him. But we might be sitting here and going, we could have played another three hours because you've got Zimbabwe out cheaply in the first innings. That's a beauty. It's been a good set to start for Nyochi. But a swing for him, 91 gone, 224 without loss. So they've laboured, the Zimbabwe bowlers. He's mixed them up, has Craig Irvin. But uh, no wickets. Garaba will continue from the airport end. Darren, you mentioned yesterday, because of the pitch, maybe a bit more of a kiss effect from uh, the bowlers. I think Nyochi offered that in his first over. He got a little bit of swing. I think that... Garava might struggle a bit because of his height. But uh, interesting, a bit of swing this morning, and we haven't seen that in two days. Bizarrely, with overcast conditions, all of a sudden the sun's out, it's baking hot, and you know, she runs in and hoops the first three balls. It's just whistled past Madon. Probably not uh, Brathwaite's finest shot in his career, but uh, in the end result, 
it has absolutely pinged to the boundary. We've seen a couple of these from him. He's got better and better with his timing. Maybe again, that slowness of the wicket. And there is that intent to score. Gives a snapshot as to what the thinking is in the West Indian camp. Looking at accelerating their scoring. I'm sure they have a target in mind before a declaration. That's a proper great shot. There's uh, no questioning that stroke. We uh, said yesterday he played the shot of the day. I know we're only two and a half overs in, but this is a shot of the day for me already. Just waited on it. Little bit of width, smacks it through the covers. And it's an aspect of Brackwood's game that has improved as his career has progressed. That offside play, his ability to drive the ball, improving all the time. And again, this could be three in a row. Off the back to Brathwaite, it is. Four more. So one through mid on, one smack through the covers, and this one off the back foot. Doesn't try and overhit this one. Gets it past the bowler in the gap and runs away for another boundary. A beautiful shot. Just getting on top of the bounce, using a vertical bat, and firm enough to beat the fielder in that uh, mid off position. We have been talking about West Indies' intent, and I think yesterday, Brathwaite happy to just get behind the line. The one he hit through the covers, maybe he would have left that one. The straight one past missed on, might have just blocked that one. But now, playing the shots, and again, sweeper out on the offside. So Zimbabwe trying to react to what Brathwaite's doing. Also not convinced that that uh, engine of Ngarava looks very warm. It needs to be running in and hitting the deck. Also looking at some of the shots, we, we're going to talk about the slowness of this wicket all day. Some of them, just at the end, how you saw Brathwaite just close the face. And I'm wondering if it's again just not quite there. His time has been superb. Ball still not quite coming on. Ninety-two bold, good over four West Indies, two hundred and thirty-six without loss. So that's your day by day, only fifty-one overs in day one, thirty-eight in day two. So lots of overs lost and today. Three in. 15 already on the board for the day to be fair 12 of one over I'm interested to see Nyochi looks warm he's got some rhythm already and he's uh, got a little bit of shape to the left hander still just the one slip gully two in the covers on the offside that's good line and good length I think I had the pleasure of uh, chatting with Brian Lara just before the start of the base play. And he was just making mention of some of the things that he was sharing with his team, of course, as the performance mentor. Many West Indians quite pleased with where the test match is at and the accomplishments of these two openers, Ratwit and Chanda Paul picking up centuries. What was most pleasing for Brown Lara was the fact that these two got starts and they were able to convert. Throughout my career playing alongside Brown Lara, he's been a stickler for that as a batter. He loves to talk about the importance of getting a start as a batter, no matter the format of the game, and carrying on, filling your boots, so to speak. And he was so proud of what these two West Indian openers have accomplished. Yeah, I guess in everyone's careers, pretty 20s and 30s don't count, do they? It's uh, the difference between the good test teams and the sort of half-decent test teams are the ones that go, like you said, fill their boots. And 
they get a big one. It's been a cliche in the change rooms for years. If you look at Tejan Ryan Chandapal, of course, he debuted against Australia recently. In Australia, got 51 on debut, and then scored a couple 40s. So this innings, of course, is an elevation for him as an opener in Test match cricket. He's gone past three figures, and one will expect that he will use that template for future efforts in this format. An average of 65 already. Pushing two, and they'll get it in the end. Slight misfield. Good running between the wickets from Brathwaite and Chandapal. It's been the hallmark of this partnership, their positive running, good communication. And there is Deja Ryan Chandapal. Fifth innings, a century already in this format. Still not a bad over from the OG. 93 ball, 238 without loss. Continue. He's got a shirt on the wrong way around underneath that one. So, I don't know if that's confusing. This was the first ball of the day. We just spoke about whether or not he was warm comfortable Nyochi does he looks comfortable he's running he's swinging a couple of balls Garaba doesn't look like he's ready just uh, complimenting the West Indies and running between the overs running between the wickets these were the shots that three fours in a row that was the first one past mid on that one was a beauty through the covers and then this one not over hit but uh, placement perfect timing really good breath weight I guess as the reason why you say fill your boots is you get better and better you time it better and better and that's evident already even that well timed watching him run between the wickets young Chandapal be quicker than his father between the wickets as well He's much younger. <laughs> I'm not saying now. <laughs> yeah, it's one uh, positive element of the success achieved with the bat. But just staying with what you're making mention of in terms of the intensity whilst batting. Ideally speaking, you expect the more time a batter spends out in the middle that his intensity will increase, his ability to control the innings will get much better. It's not something that the West Indians have done consistently well in recent times. Oftentimes, West Indian batters, they work really hard, get a start, get into 30s and 40s, and then get out. And a lot of the times, it's because you get relaxed as a batter. And then you make a small error and you lose your wicket. It's another aspect of focus for Brian Lara. He always felt, and I played a lot of my career alongside him, he always felt that the more time you spent on in the middle, the more you understood the conditions and the opposition bowlers, is the better you should become and the higher your intensity should be. That's why when you get a start, it's so important for you to carry on and make use of the opportunity. Again, but, uh, talking about intent, maybe not a proper test shot. It's got the end result. Brathwaite realizes that the field set by Zimbabwe not happy to sit and just bang it into the